I'm Marty Meredith from Silver Creek Leather Company. We um, have a great influencer with us today, Eileen Hall. She's having a little bit of technical difficulty, so you'll probably see the project only for the beginning, but then we'll see her smiling face probably towards the end. Um, but we wanted to welcome everyone. Um, we have the leathers that she is using are currently in the jewelry section at Michael's. So let's get started and see what fun things she has to make for us. If you haven't followed Eileen online, you probably should. She has a Facebook page and she's done a, a class and previously for us on the Michaels page. So let's see what she has today. Okay. Hi, everybody. Am I, am I there? <laughs> You're here. Yes, you're okay. <laughs> I have to tell you the uh, layout I have here is a disaster. My my computer is like turned on its side and I can't see anything. So if anybody has questions, like Marty said, please go ahead and ask her. Um, I want to thank Lindsay for trying to uh, get me on. I don't know what happened. But anyway, we had, like uh, they said, a little technical difficulty. But we're going to keep going and we're going to create and Marty's going to uh, send the questions out to me if you guys have any. So just quickly, I love leather. I love going to yard sales and finding things like this. I mean, aren't they beautiful? Look at all this uh, glittery, fun stuff. So I get them when I can find a good deal. And uh, so lately I started combining my jewelry with my leather. And the reason I did that was because I like to make journals. So I was making jewelry for my journals. So now I thought, well, shoot, I've got all this extra chain. I have all these really fun little pieces. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and combine leather with my jewelry. And I think it came out pretty cool. So um, because these are all kind of one of a kind, uh, I am going to go ahead and show you a couple things. I'm going to show you some things that worked, some that didn't, and just some a lot of inspiration and ideas, because what you have is not what I have, but I hope that you'll get the idea of how this can work. So here was my first piece that I did. And what I did here was I die cut a leather, a, 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 a leather uh, leaf and I embossed it and then I added some of this like a gilding wax to it and I really like that effect and then I went through what I had and I found this cool like pendant piece I mean it's kind of wearing off it's not real but you know I figure if I get it at a yard sale I'm not if this is not like a um a work of art that I'm gonna wear to a ball or something you know it's just something fun that I would bring uh you know wear around so these are other little beads and things that I found that I just added on with the jump ring. So um, let's just go over a couple of the tools that I'm going to use today and show you what how they work. All right, this is a very basic um, nippers, I think they call them. Um, when you're taking the jewelry apart, you'll want to have a nice strong pair of these because um, some of the links are loose, uh, uh, not as uh, strong. Some of them are. So you need something pretty sturdy to, you know, take your links apart. Um, I like to use a needle nose pliers because when I'm opening my jump rings, I need one for this side and one for that side to open the jump ring. So uh, you're double fisted here. So those are nice to have. I do have a pair of leather scissors because people were asking, you know, I did a lot with die cutting. That's my original thing. I uh, designed dies for Sizzix. And so I, <laughs> I'm lazy about cutting, but um, you easily could make any of these things by making a template out of paper, tracing around it and just cutting it with your leather scissors. And I love this one, this piece, um, like Marty said, you can find most of this in the jewelry aisle and these leathers come paired together. So, you know, they, they come as a set and uh, there's a small one, kind of a decorative one. And then there's like a base leather underneath. So there were some really interesting combinations. So you have to think about what it is that you have jewelry wise and what's going to go along with it. Um, also, I wanted to show you, I'm taking it off because my friend gave me these. This is a real soft 
uh, piece of leather that she just cut a, a leaf shape out of. She pinched it together, punched a hole, added a jump ring and a you know, ear wire. And I love these because they're soft and they don't, you know, they're light. So what I was thinking today was I wanted to make another pair like that, but add some jewelry to it. So here are some more of the different colors. So you can see there's a good choice, uh, whatever color you like. And the neutrals are kind of nice because they'll go with anything. So Eileen, we, well, yeah, Eileen, yes. we do have a, a question. Uh, is there special dyes for leather? And I don't know if you're going to touch on that later. Um, um, well, we're going to actually cut one. Um, you want to have the steel rule dies. Those are the heavy duty ones. You know, the, the, um, the ones that look like this. Okay. The, not the wafer thin like this, that will not cut. Okay. okay. So we're going to do a question this. is, yeah. does the leather have to be sealed? So the gold doesn't rub off on clothing, et cetera. I'm not sure exactly um, what that means. I think what she means is where did it go? We had that little pendant. Um, I did, yeah, I did rub that off, um, and nothing is coming off now. And plus the, the gold is on the outside, you know, this would be the only thing that would go against your shirt or whatever. So I think you'd be fine with that, but I would, when you're done applying the paste, I would just take like a soft towel or a t-shirt and just kind of rub that off just to make sure. So that's that. Now here is another kind of leather. What we're looking at here, these are kind of textured and already treated leathers. They have the color on them. They have, you can see this kind of pebble finish here and a soft back. This would be really pretty. Um, but this is a veg tan leather. And this is a little different because, there's another piece of it. This is, um, well, here's one piece. This is not treated, it's not stained, it isn't processed in any way, I don't think that I can tell. So we are gonna make a... It went through the, that particular piece did go through the tanning process. It's called oh, it vegetable, okay. vegetable okay. tanning, but it's a natural, it's left natural. Okay, but what I like about it is that you are able to emboss it like in an embossing folder. So this is what we're going to make and I'll show you how to do it. It's a very simple shape. Again, you could trace it if you didn't have the die. And what I did was I just took, a, you know, I'm sure this is like not even a cubic zirconia. It's like a rhinestone or something. But this was just one of the earrings that I found in my collection. There always seems to be one like this, but I think they're nice and pretty. So I just die cut it. I embossed it and then I added color to it and then I shaped it while it was wet to, um, you know, that shape. And then I just put that through the back. So you'd want to look for one that had a long back to it so that you can get that in your ear. But um, I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But I just kind of wanted to go over some of the other uh, supplies and things that you could do with leather. Um, here is this uh, craft lace and I like this because I like the colors of it and it could easily, if you had like an old pin or something, you know, you could just, it would be so easy to add that to the bracelet. Um, and to make this, I just kind of twisted it and added this little D-ring to keep it together and then added these closure. So you're also probably going to want to have some jump rings and some other jewelry uh, findings and also maybe some um, of the leather findings to combine whatever you have. Um, these are the ear wires that I use, but you know, any color, I just happen to have a lot of sil silver. Um, but I like these pins because there are tons of them. They're everywhere. And I just get these bags of jewelry, but they do have the pin back on them, but you could easily add a jump ring to the top and just add that to a chain or uh, an existing necklace and you, you know, have totally remade the piece. Um, this is an extra piece that I had, but this was 
all together. I mean, it was huge, this necklace. I don't know what it looked like when it was all, you know, it was kind of twisted. I, I took it apart and I made my own chain here. And so I thought it would be fun to add things to this, like, you know, a pin. Just add that on and you've got a whole different necklace. You could add a little leather tassel. I think that would be cool. Um, these are some straps that I kind of cut out of dies that I had, but this is the piece that was left over from this necklace. So you could take that and, you know, add it to your bracelet here, you know, with a little jump ring or wire and add that on. You might have to cut that off or even loop it around like that according to size. That's the thing about it. It's very fluid. You know, you just have to work with the things that you have. Um, here's another piece that I did. And this was so easy because all I did was die cut a piece of leather. And I feel like this really has such a nice background for this, which is, you know, a cheap necklace, but any kind of extra texture adds interest. And uh, the, the size of it was made more significant because this is bigger, you know, so um, I just added an eyelet to the top and added on a jump ring and added it to my chain. I also did make some of these little cards, you know, just for fun and uh, they're easy to do. This was made out of a piece of chipboard and I just punched a hole in it and they had a little decoration. So if you wanted to give these as gifts, you know, they'd be really fun for Christmas, like unique one of a kind kind of uh, gifts to do and pretty inexpensively. Um, now, just to note this here, this piece in the back, the leather was this, and I just took it and cut slits you know, right here. And then I added my little charms to that. So it's kind of like a little fringy. You could cut that too and have like a tassel effect. So just so many ideas. I mean, and again, it all depends on what you have, what you like, the colors that you like. I do want to show you one uh, fail. <laughs> they look like snakes. Um, this was I had the idea like, hmm, I wonder what would happen if you wrapped the leather, if you cut it into a strip and you wrapped it around like a pen or a, a knitting needle is actually what I used right here. Oops, I released some things when I did that. Um, so I just wrapped my strand of leather around my knitting needle. I wet it and then I heated it. And these for some reason stayed and these did not. <laughs> So that I call a fail, but still I keep it to remember that idea, you know, so these are kind of cool. I think they look really fall and they were so easy. I just cut a strip of the leather, like I said, wrapped it around here, heated it, wet it and heated it, and then added a jump ring and an ear wire. So, you know, that, that'd be a fun little thing. I bet kids would like them, you know, and they're kind of adjustable. If they were too long, you could trim them. You know what I mean? So that's one thing. Uh -oh. Someone is asking to look at your necklace cards. Okay, hang on. I'm trying to turn off my. Oh no. I can't turn off my. That is my mother calling. I'm very sorry. I can't turn it okay. off. Okay. <laughs> I can't find the thing to turn it off up there. Um, the cards here, is that what you're saying? These are just like a three by four um, piece of chipboard that I cut. And then I just went around and, you know, added a line with my, is that what they were asking? Yes. Yeah. And then um, for these, I just punched a hole here and here. And for this one, I just cut like a little slit. I think they look nice like this. And then I added a little bag on the back to hold the chain because it kind of was flopping around. So, you know, it, it was all just kind of um, fun to play with, honestly. <laughs> but let me go ahead and show you how to do something instead of talking about it all the time. I have all to right. tell you that someone says that your fail is not a fail. Oh, They're pretty and they would wear them. Oh, well, thank you. Good. <laughs> You never know. I mean, that's the thing. It's everybody's taste. Everybody 
likes different things. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna bring my big shot over here. And like I said, what we're gonna do is out of this, we're gonna cut a piece of leather, the veg tan leather. We're gonna emboss it with a folder, an embossing folder, and then uh, color it with some ink. And this is actually an ornament box, but I took the shape of it, this little kind of oval, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but you know, if you guys have dies, use them for the shapes, you know, use all your supplies together. That's really fun. Okay, can you guys see that okay? Yes. So, so I'm just putting together my little sandwich here, my cutting pads, and I'm going to place my piece of the veg tan leather down, and I'm just going to cover this shape here. And I'm going to roll that through. Now, sometimes you will find that um, the leather kind of sticks in there if it's real. Um, I don't know what the word is. This stuff usually just pops out, and it does. But you may have to just trim the edges a little bit. Same with fabric because it's organic and it, you know, has little things about it. So we're going to use this again. And now we're going to use our platform, which, where did I put it? Here it is. Okay. Because this is a 3D folder, you're only going to use one cutting pad. I have to remember that. And then the other thing is with leather, you want to spritz this with some water and that's going to help the fibers like uh, mold to the impression that you're trying to put in it. I'm going to give it just a little more. It really seems to soak it up. So I'm going to lay that in my little sweater embossing folder and I'm just going to run that through. And I'm going to do that well, just one time. This one's pretty tight. Well, maybe I'll roll it back too. Like I said, a lot of this is just experimentation and having fun. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? So now we can you show it. Can you show it at a little bit different angle? There you go. That's yeah. good. Uh, okay. So this may not be the best pattern, but it's what I had on hand. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color it just a little bit. So I'm getting a piece of paper to protect my work surface. This is a pigment ink that I'm just going to put on there. And I tried a spray and it didn't really leave much of a color on it. So I wanted something a little bit darker. Is there a link to the sweater folder? Um, I, well, there's my Etsy store, but I don't think Michael's carries it, but that's where it is. Now, I it, am going to, is it called a sweater? Uh, it's a sweater 3D Sizzix embossing folder. Now, these might be a little bit different um, because my other one I had sprayed with water first and this one I didn't oh I guess it's pretty close isn't that cool so you can make these whatever color you like and then what I did was while it was wet I bent it because I want that shape to stay that way because originally I thought um I think I'll just keep it long but that's kind of long for me I like a more um kind of a shorter I'm looking for my pliers. Here they are. So these are handy to have. These are a leather plier, or I'm not sure what you call it. What do you call this, Marty? Jewelry punch. Jewelry punch. Jewelry okay. Punch? I, I don't know, but it's really cool. <laughs> so I'm just going to punch a hole up here and a hole down here. And then we're going to put our little diamond, our fake diamond, if I can find it, through. Now, the other thing that I was thinking was it would be cool 
if you did leave it long like this, you could add like a little charm to the bottom, depending on how brave you are and, you know, how much is there ever too much, basically. You could add all kinds of things, little strands and, and stuff. I'm looking for, there it is. So all my jewelry, there's tons of these little diamond earrings. Be fun if I knew the difference and maybe someday I'll score a real diamond. I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't even know. So then I'm just connecting them here and I've got my little set of earrings. Isn't that cute? So I think that's the nice marriage of the leather and the junk jewelry. Um, what else do we have over here? Um, now I keep my jewelry on these little rings here. And every once in a while I hang them and I go through and say, you know, I really could use a bunch of these uh, beads or these little shapes, you know, those would be cute to put on a bracelet. Like I could see hanging them on here, you know, like a little charm bracelet. And you could do the same thing and color them. You know, if the color's kind of coming off, you can just add a little bit of this stuff. And um, I know that at Michael's, they have the rub and buff, which I've used, but look at how that changes the look of that, you know, and metal is metal. I mean, and then I would again, like, um, whoever it was asking about rubbing off, I would do that because you don't want that coming off on clothing, but it does stay pretty well. You can also, you know, like I said, you can add it to the leather, which really gives it kind of a nice glow. So anyway, that's how I kind of organize my jewelry. Um, are there any other questions out there? Sorry, I was on mute. No, there are not any more no, questions, no questions right now. Someone said okay. using a bail would look nice. Yes, it would. And I don't have any on me. I was thinking about that today. Um, also, a bail is? I'm sorry? What is a bail? Oh, well, a bail would be something like uh, a piece that you could attach up here that would allow a chain to go through. Um, okay. Yeah, I wish I, oh, wait, something here. Let me see if there's one in my little bowl of goodies here. Um, isn't that one cute? I could just see that on like um, a, a little pendant. I think that is so adorable. Um, and then what I do sometimes is I will cut out scraps and you know what, let's work with these. Um, here's another, that's another leaf that I added gold to. And then I, added like this gold loop, but you don't even have to use the same, you know, metal. I, I think if you're doing boho, it's kind of, you'd want to use a different one, but you could easily, that now that would be heavy, but you know, the ones that have the dangly ends to them, or these are fun too. These are the clip-on earrings. And these are handy because you can close them. That actually would kind of work like a bail if you attached this to a chain. You know, you could thread this through like this. And I'm surprised that I keep finding clip-on earrings because that reminds me of my grandma. <laughs> but I think either these are grandma's uh, vintage or people are still buying them that don't have pierced ears. So I probably would have to add something to this to keep it flat because otherwise it's going to flop around. But that is the beauty also of combining the leather to give a base and then a nice piece of jewelry. Not that I love that one, but that was just a sample. But these are even cool too. Like if you did that shape that you had done with the earrings, you know, that would be pretty. That's a pin. You could just pin it at the top and the bottom. You know, so that's another way to add your, your earrings. And the other thing that I've been liking is, you know, even like a little tiny ball earring like this, you can add your leather shapes to the back of it and use the holder, you know, to um, put in your ear. So it's really easy and quick. That's kind of pretty for Christmas. We could do, you know, something like that and another shape. Um, 
Here's a question. Yes. Can you paint leather if not using, can you paint leather if not using other than veg tans with any type of paints, for instance, like acrylic paints? I buy, buy those leather remnant bags Michael has and love them. So there uh, is a um, paint, a, I would recommend that you use paint for leather. I don't. I think acrylic would sit on the surface. Yeah. Uh, Michael yeah. carries some paint pens that are like oh. markers. Um, there's a marker end and then a brush tip end. I would recommend using something like that. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah, I haven't done a lot of painting. I've done the staining, you know, I would call it with an ink, but I have not done actual painting. But like what you said, Marty, I think it might sit on the, the top and maybe come off, but I don't know. Um, I have done like the metal stamping where you use these type of, uh, you know, metal stamps where you press it in. And then I have done ink inside or, uh, black paint inside that to kind of accentuate the, uh, you know, letter or whatever it is. So someone wants to know what the cut the cutter shapes are that you're using in the in the Sizzix machine. Oh, I guess okay. the shape that you cut the earring yeah. out of. Yeah, um, this is um this actually I'm seeing a lot of possibilities with that. Um, this is called the ornament. Um, box ornament and what it is it's got a circle here which you know I thought would make a cute ornament it's a three inch circle so you could use that it's kind of big for jewelry but you know um this shape was just kind of cool I thought and then this step is forward a little bit because we can't oh, see it there you yeah, go it's hard yeah. to see because it's set in the yes um, you, we can see it here. now yeah okay so that's kind of fun, but there's other shapes like this, you know, you can cut and emboss. This is a piece of the veg tan leather and I love how that came out. I mean, it's not jewelry, but wouldn't that be a cute holder if you did some Christmas earrings and just put them on this or, um, I don't know, I love that. Um, also, I was thinking, and this is not technically jewelry, but I thought it might be kind of cool to add like um, make this into a bookmark. So, you know, to punch a hole at the bottom here and add like an earring base here. So let's just try that. Someone's asking if you ever use glue or adhesive. Yes. There is a leather glue in the yeah. uh, Michael's craft, or I, I don't know if it's in craft or jewelry. Okay, yeah, I, I do. And I've also used, um, trying to think for this, like I, I used this, whoops, which Michaels also has the Loctite, um, just because you only needed a little tiny drop. And I wanted to put my jump ring up here and use this as like a holder. So I just did a little dot of that and it held great. So, you know, you can use what you have. I'm just looking for a, where did my bookmark go? I want something that goes with this, which, you know, you could do an earring. I mean, you have to think about the bookmark. I guess it would go like this, you know, and you could close this up and, I mean, this is really, let me get my tools. This looks very crazy here. And I don't know if I even love that, but it's kind of big. But, you know, you would just kind of twist this around and it's hard to do on camera, but, um, you know, I would just kind of close this up so you didn't catch your fingers and have this cute little, little accessory here for your bookmark when you stick it in your book. Um, I mean, there's so many ideas, it's hard to just pick one. I'm trying to think. I had another thing lined up over here to do, and then I got all out of whack when we had our technical problems. <laughs> um, okay, so I know one thing that is really fun to make is a tassel. And I'm trying to find, there was, I like to make them out of the thinner leather. Um, this is pretty thin. And this is just a scrap that I had that I was kind of playing around with, but 
I like the idea of doing these and then making earrings out of them. This is like long, but um, well, let's try some. Let's just make one and see what happens. So I don't know if you guys are very adventurous in your tassel wearing, but <laughs> I'm not really. So to make a tassel, all you do is get your leather scissors and figure out how long you want your little strands to be and then just go ahead and cut. And these could be used anywhere, again, like for jewelry or if you're doing a leather book and you want to put a, a little charm on it or um, anything really. Zipper pull, earring. Necklaces. Yeah, on a necklace, that would be very dramatic. You know, I'm not being very straight here because I can't see. <laughs> but anyway, you do a long strip. And depending on how thick you want it, there's kind of a fun trick that I wanted to show you. And these would all be the same, but you know, get the idea of this. I mean, really, this um, class is about inspiration, not so much as how to do everything, because I don't have all the same supplies as you, you don't have the same stuff as me, but it's taking stuff we have, like, you know, my grandmother, I mean, my mom, I just cleaned her house out, and we've got just bags of her costume jewelry that I remember as a kid, you know, she would get be getting ready to go out, and we would just all take her jewelry and try it on. I have three sisters and, you know, we would all play with it. And, you know, so it's kind of taking some of the memories that you have and putting them into another way to use them, you know, recycling. So here we have, I mean, it's just kind of fun to feel that. <laughs> but um, basically what I do is I cut off one of these little strips. Actually, I fold it up like that. And that's going to be my little loop. And then you're just going to kind of wrap this around. And if you do have glue, you can wait until the end, but it doesn't hurt to add a little along the way, just in case you, you know, lose your grip and uh, it, you have to start at the beginning. But anyway, just keep checking it and see you know, how much you like. You can always cut it off now or you can keep going. And then what I do is flip this over here. Can you guys see that? And, you know, make your loop and then glue here. So let's just do that. And I think this would be pretty if you had some little charms to add on to the top really don't need much at all. I don't want to get that on my hand. I'm afraid I will peel my skin off. <laughs> this stuff scares me. And then I'm just going to put a little bit right here and tuck that in. And then you've got this cute little, oops, stick it way in there. Well, maybe I did it too tight. Anyway, you can stick it against the edge. But that is basically a fun little tassel. And then you would cut off this extra here. Don't chop your tassels off. So, you know, some of them, and then just kind of fiddle with it. Some of them move really, you know, the longer ones, they'll flip around a little better. You never know the leather, uh, it depends on the kind of leather. Um, I have more in the other room, but anyway, you know, and you don't have to make them that thick either. So just kind of fun, but that is obviously too big for earrings, but if you just twisted it a couple times, you know, that might be, if you were very dramatic, you might wear that, but I probably wouldn't. <laughs> But I would put it on a journal. So there's something for everybody, you know. 
And it's kind of interesting to think what you pick up because that reflects your taste. Um, here's another one. And it looks like someone had already remade this. You know, they made their own little jump ring here and attached it on this chain, which is kind of interesting. But I was thinking this would be cool to add um, like maybe something like this on the back. You know, you could add a piece to it. Let's see, let me see what shapes I have here. Here's another. Someone's asking if you can use fringe scissors on leather. Um, you know, I have them. I should try them. Wait a minute, I have some. They're not here in my holder. Um, I don't think that they would work though, honestly, unless it was really, really thin leather because those blades are so close to each other and so fine. I, I just don't think they would work. It's a cool idea though. There's probably a die that would make a tassel that would make it perfect, but um, what else? You can, I mean, this would be a cute little key ring and then add your, this I think is a tie tack, but it seems kind of weird because it's like a bow, but I don't know. And see, so you could add a little charm to that but just take your pieces. So sometimes I just cut a whole bunch of stuff and just, you know, see what I can put together and what makes sense. But that's even kind of cute for your keys. You know, I'm not sure it would stay. I would probably glue that, but you know, lots of stuff you can do. So um, yeah, this was like, this was an old bracelet, which I like these because they're light, they're obvious, they're plastic, but you know, um, the glass is a nicer quality, but these were just things I was fooling around with. Um, the one kind of bad thing is that you probably will never find the same pieces again. So you're gonna get some that are good and some that are bad, but you know, that's the joy of creating and combining your materials that you have with other things that you have in your stash. And that is one thing that I like because, you know, I have all this stuff and I like to think that I someday will use some of it. So uh, to use it together, it makes me happy. So i um, trying to think of what else we can make here. I think this would really, I want to do something with this. Where did that little bracelet go? Um, also guys, if you're making anything like with me, um, make sure you do the hashtag make it with Michael's or Michael's classes. And if you want to go back and see something, if you missed it, you can go back on YouTube or the um, Michael's app, I think, or, or the classes. Is that right? You can do watch that watch again if you want to. So here, I don't know, I was thinking that would be cute, but it's kind of too, too cutesy for this. But here I might take an earring and something, man, who would wear that? These are huge. Look at them. <laughs> or even something like this, you know, you could monogram if you happen to find and just take this and add your little jump ring in here. See, I, this is when I need two pliers. So one tip that I found out, you when you separate a jump ring, you want to go like this. Don't pull it apart like that, or it's you lose the shape of it. So just pull it apart a little bit and then add on your whatever you want there and then put it back together like this. Whoa. Ah. So, you know, that's kind of cute. I have a sister, Kathy. I should give it to her. <laughs> Didn't know I had a K. And then there's all kinds of different closures. And that's another thing. You can recycle pieces that you have. Um, you know, you could just take the, the closure off this and use it with something else. Because sometimes I like to get, actually, there was this one store that I went to in Pennsylvania. And we were working on some journals. And I said, do you have like any broken jewelry? And he reaches under the counter and plops down this giant Ziploc bag full of like this and says, yeah. And I said, oh, how much? And he says, $20. I was like, I will take it. 
And so I did, and that's what some of this stuff is. But um, this one's kind of cool. You have to look for the ones that are missing gems, even though those are pretty easy to replace, but you could always like hot glue something on top of it. So you don't even notice that and make kind of a little collaged pin, you know, I love these. I wish people still wore them on their coats. I just think they're so cute. And all the Christmas ones. Look at that. Isn't that cute? It's like a little work of art. And when you put that with something else, all those textures, they're just cool. Maybe there's something well, I think, wrong with me. I think if you build a base of either a bracelet and necklace or the earrings of the leather, then you do the interchangeable. You don't even have to yes. wear it the same way every time. That's true. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, there's just a lot you can do with this stuff. See, it looks like somebody here. Well, I don't know. That's kind of a mess. Sometimes you just have to throw them out. Like, I don't even know what they are sometimes, but they're fun to look at. And yeah, that's like a stick pin. I don't know what I would do with that, but you could stick that just in like, you know, or just kind of stitch that on with some wire wrap or something. That might be cool. Maybe that would stand out a little more. You know, you just have to try it in different, or even just like that. You could glue it to the back and there we've got a little, two leaves, a little leaf collage. And then it's and late because they have bad weather. I don't know if that means it's snowing somewhere. And but weather. It's not here. <laughs> I don't know. Nice stash. I think well, you have all the matches to what's in my stash. So somebody must have the other half yeah. of everything that you have. <laughs> Probably. That's how it winds up in the grab bag. Look at that little Santa. I mean, even a little Santa on a leaf. I, I'm just thinking, I'm loving these, these post earrings now because I don't know, before I didn't connect the dots that like all you have to do is punch a hole in a piece of leather, stick it in, and you've got like an instant little, you know, collage really for an earring or a journal thing or on the cover of a journal. I'm a little obsessed with journals. But, you know, what I really like is the mix and match side of it. Oh, the one thing I wanted to say was, if you are going to die cut um, leaves or anything that is not symmetrical, you want to cut one going that way and one going this way. So one you'll cut with the face down, one you'll cut face up so that you have opposing, you know, shapes like this. Um, and you know, these would make really pretty earrings. Let's just um, glue these together and put some jump rings around them. They're so easy to make your base and then you never know what you're gonna find. And you know what, I don't, if, if we're talking like boho jewelry to me, that means it doesn't have to match exactly. You know, so you can have even two different things. I think that's more interesting to look at, you know? So I'm just taking my jump ring and putting that in here. And then I'm gonna put a little glue and that should do it. And then I can add that to a pendant or whatever. I could emboss it if I wanted, but you saw what that looked like already. And then what I probably would do is take one of my clips and just let that sit for a minute. And do the other one. So does this give anybody ideas? Does anybody else collect jewelry like me? <laughs> there might be something of the hoarder in me. I don't know, but it's just all so pretty, pretty and glittery, you know, and then the contrast of the like substantial leather is just very appealing, you know, and it comes in so many colors and shapes and textures. And I just think it's such a good addition to the kind of shiny, you know, it's just a cool contrast, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. How do you feel about working with leather? It's not as, um, 
threatening as some people think it is, is it? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's just, it's like anything else. You have to experiment with it, get comfortable with it, find out the qualities of each piece because it is different. You know, every piece is different, but they each have their own special fun things about them. So it, maybe it's their color that you like, or maybe it's the smoothness, or maybe it's the you know, softness of making a bracelet that's going to feel nice around your arm, you know, it, each piece is different and, and kind of fun to play with. So what I would say is just experiment with it, it with a scrap, you know, don't, don't buy a big piece and, and think that you're going to create a masterpiece in your first go, just get some, start playing with it, see how each kind works for you, what you like about it. The other thing is you can use the other side. If you like how that looks, you can just, you know, turn it over and use that side. Nothing is saying there really aren't any rules anymore. I think with a lot of crafts that there were, there were a lot of rules as to how you should do it and what, went with what and now I think people are just getting a little more adventurous and trying what they want to do and seeing if it works and that's how we keep evolving what we do you know with with experimentation and not being afraid to try stuff that's just what I think uh, but got some comments here I've always heard earrings are supposed to be sisters or cousins not identical twins oh that's I funny. like that yeah I think that's right <laughs> I like what you're saying there. This looks like a fun project to do with my mom and niece. Yeah. Generational jewelry making with our stash. Oh, I think you would get all kinds of really creative ideas if you did that because all the different ages, all the different styles and experience and all of that, I think. And just it would be fun to create together, you know. I think that's a great idea. Mother, daughter, grandmother, all yeah. working with grandma's jewelry or something. Yes. Never yeah, thought of using never thought of using leather with my upcycled jewelry. Great idea. Thank you. Oh, well, good. Thanks. And let's see. Are those quilters clips? <laughs> Someone um, asked. Actually, these are from the Dollar Tree. I love them. The reason I like them is because they have silicone at the tip. You could use them with fabric. Um, but I like them because like if you use a binder clip, you're going to get a mark on the front and I don't like that. So I do like these. Um, uh oh, I might have stuck. Nope, we're good. <laughs> yeah, Dollar Tree. <laughs> Why did you glue the jump ring rather than just punch a hole in it? Well, I could have done that and I could have chopped off, but I, you know, it seemed like a natural thing because I have this stem sticking out and I don't know. I don't, not sure what I'm going to do with it. The hole would make your jump ring go in the opposite direction. Well, that's true too. If you did two jump rings, yeah, I'm learning that too. You really have to figure out how many jump rings you need to make it hang how you want. So whenever I do anything, you know, I hold it up and just kind of let it hang. So it goes to where it's going to go because um, yeah, that's not a good not a good surprise. Oh no, I have to take that thing apart. <laughs> I wonder how what that kind of cards did you say you used for your finished jewelry? Someone's uh, asking these, about your cards again. <laughs> yeah, these, these are just pieces of chipboard. And I just used, you actually could probably use your jewelry punch to punch the holes, but I, I'm, I think I just used a hole puncher, paper hole puncher. And then I just went around and, you know, I like to have something, I think the packaging is like a big part of if you're going to give it as a gift. And so I like to put my name on stuff and I like to doodle. So this is nothing great, but um, it's just kind of fun. And it echoes the whole handmade feel of the piece. You know, there's some little flowers and I mean, it's nothing great. It's not my best work, but it's just kind of fun to go along with the project. So and it's really easy. I just used a Pigma pen, you know, one of these and just went around, made like a little, wait, we'll do one. Great class, so many ideas flowing. I bought the leather kit from Michael, so now I will use it, thanks. Oh, good. Yeah, just um, have fun with it and play because 
I mean, what we're using today is all real leather, genuine leather yes. uh, products. There are other products out there that are not the genuine leather, but um, the, I know that that's what you're using today. Yeah. Yes, these were um, leather that is in the jewelry aisle. Um, that one may not be. Well, wait a minute. Maybe it is. Yes, it is. I took them apart because I was using them. So I'm not sure which one goes with which. There was the six inch squares that were like this that were rolled up, you know? Yes, those are the five by fives. There's five five by fives rolled. Yeah. Um, that are very versatile and very yeah. unique colors. Yeah, they and, are. And then this is the cool. I, I'm not sure what I want to do with that, but it feels really... Um, I don't know, it's smooth, but it's got a, I don't know if you can see that texture there. Mm -hmm. I think that would make a nice background like this, really dramatic, you know, actually that would even be cool with that one, you know, that would really stand out. So pops. yeah, if you even had some family pieces, you know, you could kind of redo them with uh, adding leather to it and you know, but I mean, the thing is, here's a jump ring. You just take it off if you want to switch it out. So you could even do it seasonally. I mean, you could do like a, maybe a green one or something for the holidays and then do, a you know, pink for the spring. I mean, you could have like a whole collection of jewelry that you adjusted with the leather according to the season. I mean, who knows? Anything is possible with leather about six minutes left there's uh let's see where did you find your chipboard that you made your cards out of <laughs> you want to hear something funny this came from a friend of mine who for some reason had about two five gallon tubs of these handbag inserts and she brought them to me when i was teaching out in um indianapolis and she brought me this giant Rubbermaid tub full of these um, purse bottoms. So I've been trying to use them up. And so I just die cut, you know, like four, I think I can get four of them out of this piece of chipboard. And it's nice and sturdy and I like the color. So, you know, that's, that's where I got it. <laughs> recycle. <laughs> yes, recycle is right. Yeah. Great class, so many ideas flowing up. I bought the leather kit. So now I'll use it. I think we had that. I've heard some people go to the thrift store or Goodwill and buy like old leather jackets and handbags and cut them oh. up and use them for jewelry. Just an yeah. idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're trying to practice, you don't want to spend, you know, $50 on a piece of leather if you don't know what you're doing or you're uncertain, you know, it's you feel better if you have tried it before but then again it's like what i said every piece of leather is different and you have to work with you know with it to to know you know how is this going to act so just always try it with a scrap first that's what i would say no i can't so get the court can you i know we had technical difficulties so I, I might be asking too much but can we see your beautiful face so you oh. can tell everybody <laughs> goodbye Sure. Let me, um, let me see how I will do this. I don't want to wreck my computer. Hang on. Um, <laughs> I had it propped up with paper and <laughs> there she is. Here I am. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, that was rough. <laughs> There's Lindsay up there. Hi, Lindsay, Maria, Carol, Monica. Oh, it's good to see everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I'll tell thank you, you what. for <laughs> thank thank you for giving us all these ideas, Eileen. I think well, it, it really have inspired people to go check out their jewelry box and good run to Michael's and get some leather. Get some leather. You need you know just a couple base pieces and play around with them and. Um, see what happens because I think you're going to like it. It's easy to cut with scissors. You have to get, you know, pretty good sturdy scissors, but um, not hard at all. And don't be afraid of the leather. It's good, good basic stuff. 
Um, I know last time Marty had talked about some people say, well, I don't want to work with leather. It's, but it's a byproduct. So the, the cow is being, you know, um, harvested for the meat and then the hide is left. So it is another form of recycling, really. So, um, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I say use it all. I, I, I'm an organ donor. I mean, you know, anyway, <laughs> a strange way to look at it. But anyway, that's, uh, that's my thought on the leather. I love it. And, you know, why not use all of it? Agreed. Better so, than it's going to the landfill. Yeah, right. Exactly. So I'm um, trying to see Janita. Oh, well, thank you for coming. Oh, good. I'm all right. I'm glad, I'm glad you can see my face. <laughs> I'm, I'm wiping the sweat away here. <laughs> These are no picnic, guys. I got to tell you, when you have the technical problems, it just kind of throws you off. But, you know, it, it all worked out. We it got to see out. your goody jar with all your fun. My goody jar. <laughs> <laughs> Save the day. <laughs> yeah. Your earrings well, look cute, by the way. Sorry? Your, your earrings that you have on are Oh, cute. yeah. My friend gave me these. I know. And they're so soft. I love them. And it's just a piece of leather just cut into a shape with two holes punched and a jump ring. Really easy. So we should have done that with, you know, I don't know. I get so overwhelmed by the ideas. It's hard to know what to do sometimes. And that that is an issue, but, um, <laughs> but then again, I just sit down and start doing it and it, it just kind of starts flowing. So, um, it, I think that's with any craft, you know, you just have to get in the zone and don't be afraid to try. That's the main thing. Just start doing something, you know, love the old style style typewriter. Yeah. I have a couple of them. That was a dollar at a thrift store. <laughs> Ah, uh, I love getting a good deal, I have to say. Um, <laughs> great ideas. Hi, Brenda, Debbie. My craft loom, room looks like yours. Yeah, that was the only thing I didn't mind not showing them back there. <laughs> because it's, I work in here, you know? <laughs> it's a working room. So, probably like yours. <laughs> well, so, thank you, Eileen. We oh, appreciate the the inspirations. Sure. I'm happy to do it anytime. Next time we'll get the, uh, the links right. And all of that. Right, Lindsay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's giving me the thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> You've heard multiple people who sell your jewelry and say, if you sell your jewelry, it isn't selling, add leather and it will sell. That's interesting, Janice. I believe it, you know, because it's more interesting, really, to have I think to me, you know, I, there's more to look at and who doesn't want that? Your husband complains you spend too much time in there. That's, they all do. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't know how much fun it is. <laughs> they say everyone loves leather. I believe it. <laughs> right, May? Yep. <laughs> well, we're lucky we have this platform and thanks to Michaels for uh, letting us come on here and be inspired and you guys inspire me. I'm going to go through and see if I'm, I'm not sure if I can read the um, the comments later, but I'd like to see what you guys were saying because I missed uh, what size is the chipboard. It's three by four. Well, thank you, Anne. You're going shopping for your jewelry bag. <laughs> Good. It's fun. Yeah, trying the thrift stores hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving and thank yeah. you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for coming. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.